Hey guys, this is going to be another Firebase Android Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to upload an image from your phone's memory to your Firebase database. So I'm going to do a little demo over here. Getting images on the emulator was a pain in the ass, so I'm just going to do a demo on my actual device. So we have authentication, just like we do in all of our other Firebase apps. So I'm going to click sign in. And then once uh, successfully signed in, we can go over to the upload section over here. And we can see it's showing the images that are in a specific folder on the phone that I've chosen and we can swap through the images by going next or going back and then to upload the image I just type a name so I'm gonna call this one ice close the keyboard and hit the upload button up here and then I'm gonna go to my Firebrace browser refresh it and you can see that the image ice was uploaded to the Firebase database Okay, I've got everything in here from my authentication tutorial. Once again, here's the link. Follow that to get up to this stage. Now I'm just going to add a button down here, and this button is going to take us to the upload screen. So we're done in Activity Main, and uh, I've also pasted everything from Main Activity from my authentication tutorial. And the only thing we need to do is create this upload activity class. Everything else is good to go. We won't need to go back into Main Activity at all. So we can close it, and we'll create our class. We'll call it upload activity, click OK, import our onCreate method. Now we'll go create the upload layout. So go to layout and create a new resource file. And of course I've made this ahead of time so I'm just going to paste it in. So we just got a couple buttons, uh, two buttons inside of a relative layout, uh, the image view and an edit text field to hold the name of the image. And we can close that. And before we move forward, let's add everything we need to the manifest. I always forget this stuff, so let's get it out of the way right now. We're going to have internet permission, write uh, to external storage, read external storage, and storage. And then we'll go down here and create our activity. Okay, that should be good for here. Close the manifest. Now we'll create our tag and declare all of our global variables. So we got our image, our edit text field for the name, our buttons, a progress dialog box for loading the image up to the Firebase database, the starting width and starting length of the image, uh, an array list of strings that's going to hold the path that the images are stored on the phone, uh, an array, an integer that marks the array position, and we'll need to add the dependencies for the storage reference. But you can't just it, you can't just do it like with authentication or real-time database where you just click here and then click here and add it you have to go if they go to the website so click here and go to click on launch in browser up here and it brings you here and you can see um, the dependencies are right here so add these to your build.gradle file and we just stick those in there and then sync there we go so now we have our storage reference okay now we're going to declare everything in the on create method so we got our image our buttons image name the path array with the strings uh, progress dialog box, Firebase authentication, and our storage reference. I'm just going to create some space down here. There we go. That's much better. So now we're going to have to create a method that checks the file permissions. I think it was before Marshmallow that um, you didn't need to do this. Like you could just add the permissions in the manifest like we did and that would be enough. But now you have to actually manually like create a method to check the file permissions for adding, for writing to storage and reading from storage. So I'll create that method here called check file permissions. And you just need to run it once when your activity starts and that'll be good enough. And we'll create the method down here. So you can just uh, straight up copy and paste this. Um, it just text, I think I think it's marshmallow, but I'm just gonna put lollipop. I mean, you could do a quick Google search and find that out. And we just need to manually check the permissions. So this is gonna cause like a dialog box to pop up on your app the first time the app runs. And you, it'll ask you to enable uh, reading and writing. Now I'm going to create a method called add file paths and what add file path is going to do is it, it's going to add all the file paths for the files that I have on the phone's storage and it's going to store them in an array so that we can reference them later. So there's our method. First thing we need to do in this method is create a variable. We're going to call it path and it's going to get the the beginnings of the phone's uh, storage path. So if you have an SD card I believe the default path will be like SD card. If you don't have an SD card, the default path is going to be um, like when you first open the app on your phone. That's called My Files. There'll there'll be somewhere on your phone there'll be a, uh, an app that called that's called My Files or Files.
and th that will point to this default location. But if you follow my tutorial exactly, you won't need to worry about that. Next, we'll add all the images, the image paths to the path array. So there's our three images, and then I'm going to call a method called uh, load image from storage. But before we move forward, I'm going to show you how to add these images to your phone's memory. So if you've never seen it before, this is a pretty good app. It's called Portal. You can just go download on the App Store. Once you download it, you literally just scan this barcode and then you can drag images from your computer into your phone. And the default location that they'll get put is right here. So if you just type this path, then it'll be good. Just note that you have to rename your images. Like on my phone, I renamed the images image one, image two, image three. So make sure that once you load those images onto your phone, you go onto your phone and rename them image one, image two, and image three. Or, you know, however many images you want. You can do 10, 20, 100 even. It doesn't matter. Okay, and now let's create this method uh, load image from storage. So the method load image from storage is going to take the file path. It's going to create a file and then create a bitmap and set the bitmap to the image. So there's our path. We just reference our path array and we use our array position integer. Then we create a file and we don't want to name the file. That's why I left this uh, null because I've already, I've already named the file up here in my path array. Then we're going to create a bitmap and pass the file to the bitmap right here. And then finally set the image, set image bitmap. There we go. And we can see we have an unhandled exception. So we can just run this in a try catch and then log it. Okay, that method's done. Now we'll go back up to the top here and we're going to set some uh, on click listeners to our buttons. So the first one we'll do is I'll uh, just do the back button. And we'll need to do a little bit of exception handling first here because the array position is greater than zero, then we can go back because we don't want to try and go back when it's already in, say, the zeroth position, for example. That would cause the app to crash. So we'll just log the back button, click, uh, de increment the array position, and then call load image from storage to refresh the image. Now we'll create an on click listener for the next button. And it's going to be the same sort of thing here. We just want to do the opposite of the back button. If it's already at the largest possible value, then we don't want it to increment anymore. So same sort of thing here, just the opposite of the back button. And then we just log it, increment the array position, and again, refresh the image with load image from storage. Okay, and so now our final on-click listener will be the upload button. First thing we'll do after the upload button is pressed is create our progress dialog. So we want to have a dialog box pop up and show that it's trying to upload something to the internet. So we just set the message as uploading image and uh, tell it to show. Now we'll create a Firebase user and get the UID. We're going to do it like this because so in our storage, we're going to create some files so that we can organize the images. So we go create and we'll go images, add the folder, and then we're going to go in that folder and create another folder and call it users, go in that folder. And then we're gonna this, and then this is gonna be where we put all of our users. So we can go over to the authentication section, grab the user ID, go back to storage, go back in here, create a new folder, and paste that. So now these are just gonna be all the images with all the different users. So you could create a different user, and then you'd paste another one right here. It just helps to organize all the data. Now we need to check to make sure the name isn't null. So make sure that, that the user adds a name to the image before they try and upload it. Do a little bit of error handling here and say if name is uh, null. If actually we'll say if it's not null, then we can carry on. Then we create a URI object and we pass our path array and refer to the array position to get the file. Now we create a storage reference object and this is going to be our, our path from our Firebase database. So remember I created an images folder, then I created a user folder, and then I created a folder that held the user ID. And so now this will paste this image into this file path and give it an extension of a JPEG. We're going to create an on success listener so we will know if it was successfully uploaded or it failed to upload. So we, can, we attach that to our storage reference. Okay, there's our on success listener and semicolon down there. If we want, we can use the task snap, what is it? Yeah, the task snapshot and print out the URL for the, when it's been successfully uploaded. I'm going to put it here in case you want to use it, but I don't actually use it in this demonstration. And then we'll print out a toast to let the user know that the upload was successful. And then finally, we'll close our uh, progress dialog box. I didn't make the toast methods. I'll paste that down below. 
For those of you who watch my videos, you'll be very familiar with this method. All right, there's a toast method. Now we're going to add an on failure listener for to let the user know if the image failed to be uploaded. So where I put that semicolon, we go, uh, where is it? New on, new on failure listener. And we're going to do the same sort of thing up here. So we'll just grab this toast method, except we'll say upload failed. Okay, I think, I think that's it. All right, let's run it and hope it works first time. All right, so I'll just sign in with one of the users here. And you can see successfully signed in. Cool. Now we'll go to the upload screen and um, we'll allow permission. Now, when we click uh, next or back, you can see that the images show up. So now we'll just go to this one and I don't know, we'll call it green because it's super green and press upload. Upload success. So now we'll refresh our Firebase database and you can see there's our image. That's all for this video. If it was helpful, don't forget to leave a like. Follow me on my social media. All of the links are down in the description box. There's LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. I post everything on Twitter, so if you want to get email notifications, or sorry, Twitter notifications when I post new videos, that's a good way to get them. Subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.